guys, how's it going? So you just saw Paul and Bethany working on the area behind our barn and they have been doing a beautiful job. There was so much stuff back here. So I wanna give you kind of a tour of this area, talk through what we're gonna be doing with this space. And then we're just gonna be working on tearing down a few more things on the new property in order to make way for our future a kind of vision for this, the spots. Also, it's kind of raining a little bit right now. I don't know if it's gonna pick up, but I'm gonna, I'm putting my hood on. Okay, so we had a bunch of stuff. Here comes Aaron. <laughs> We had a bunch of stuff back here, pots, uh, firewood, a bunch of uh, garden carts, just miscellaneous supplies that we, you know, access quite a lot. Doesn't it look awesome back here? So much better. So much better. So the goal is we're going to continue kind of, there's a few more things we need to clear out. Um, there's some rolls of fencing and barbed wire that were here when we, you know, got the property, but we're gonna clear all of that. And then Chad's gonna come in and just work on leveling up the space, getting rid of any divots. And then he's gonna spread fresh gravel in this area. And we are going to, I don't know when this is gonna happen, but we would like to build some kind of an overhang off the back of the barn that's covered so that we can park our gators back here, which is gonna open up the two bays in our barn so we can park our trucks in the barn. I'm so excited for that. Aaron's just, you're taking right after it. Doesn't that have, I guess electrical's off. Yeah. <laughs> like don't electrocute yourself. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do you just cut the wires? Like, what's your plan here, Aaron? Well, I broke one side. Oh. I suppose, well, oh, there it comes. I don't know where it's going from. Ooh. It's cheddar. Ugh. Oh my. Okay, let's walk over here. Okay, so back behind the greenhouse, we do have, these are the plants that we've been wintering over that we had left at the end of last season. We didn't have a chance to get them in the ground. There's some boxwoods, some beautiful junipers. Um, there's some awesome hookeras. Look at these back here. And there's hookerellas in here. Oh, there's some hydrangeas and sedum, baptisia. Just a fun selection of things that we'll be able to work on once we can plant, which won't be long, I don't think. And then we had this blue spruce moved, which came from right over here because we will have a lane coming on this side of the barn to access this area back here and also to possibly access the barn. The well for this property is right here. So we are planning on building some sort of a structure to protect it. And then these are some of the things that were left here. So, you know, we're gonna find new homes for the bricks um, and then we're going to take a load to a scrapyard. Um, like the barbed wire, we won't need that. And there's just some other, like an old pool cover reel. And then I, I'm not real sure what that is. Some manner of something. Oh, he's got the loppers out. Are those the ones I just cleaned? Yeah. Oh yeah. This is right where Salvador had his shed, you know, when we had our fence. So we had a three rail white fence uh, that was right. You can see where the post came out right here and right here. So the fence came here and then there were some kind of open sheds back here. You're supposed to cut wire with those blades there, Aaron? I don't know. Just sharpened those yesterday. I wonder where this comes from. Yeah. You made pretty quick work of that. And you can see Paul over there, he's got the tractor out and he is pulling out a fence, which we will show you everything when we're all done. We have a few other things we're gonna be taking out and I just wanted to walk you through some of those things and our thought process behind taking them out, removing them. So right here, we're gonna be taking this little tree out. I've been looking forward to this day for a while. It's got so much damage on the trunk. It's a type of red maple. Look at that. Yeah, it's like heaving out of the ground. It's never been healthy and I've been wanting to get my hands on it for a while. I might not even have to get my hands on it, Aaron. Are you just gonna pull it right out well, of the ground or what? I mean, I'll bet if we just get the tractor on it, Yeah. we can pull it out. Yep, so that's coming out. You can see this pile right here, Paul already removed. It was like a um, three foot? Yeah, just a little uh, chain, chain link. link fence. Uh, so we'll remove the, the boards there and kind of clean this area up. And then we are planning on removing the lights today. I am so looking forward to this. <laughs> But, but think of the children. <laughs> we debated on the whole light situation. Not really. 
Kind of. I mean, we talked. We had a conversation about yeah, it. Yeah, there wasn't really any debate. I think both of us wanted them gone. Yeah. They just, they tower above everything. They're right directly behind our pond area. So you just see these giant things, and I'm not sure that they ever used them. No, I never saw them yeah. use them. So the problem with it is, the only time of year that one would want to be out here playing on the basketball court is like what, late spring through early fall? Yeah. When it's staying light until very late in the evening. When we get to a point in the evening that you would actually need to use these lights, I don't want somebody out here bouncing basketballs and making a bunch of noise. I mean, we have neighbors and for It'll myself. Be like 10 o'clock. Yeah. Like you turn them on after 10 p.m. And right. I feel like, I mean, flip around. The neighbors are not that far. No, neighbors are right there. And basketballs, when they're bouncing on the ground, they make so much noise. And it makes sense, like if you have a park or like a high school yeah. with, with this sort of situation. But at a home, I mean, I feel like if we do end up wanting lights at some point, we'll probably figure something different out and not something so tall. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's our thought process behind removing the lights. I just don't think we would actually use them. And if I stand over here by the pond, I mean, having those gone is going to be so nice for the view over here. And having the view nice from the pond area, I think is much more important than having the lights that we will most likely never use. And the last thing we're hoping to get rid of is the soccer goal post over here in the other side. Let me walk you over here. Okay. So I don't know if you can see it out there. This right here. So we're hoping just to pop that out. The only thing that we can't get rid of ourselves, I think we're gonna have to have Chad do it, is the bottom part of this old pole. It was the old power line that we had taken out um, and they weren't able to get in there and at the time and pull that out. So they just cut it off. Uh, so we'll have to probably have a bigger machine because I think that's buried pretty deep. So you can see the line between the original dirt lands and the new property that we just bought. We're hoping to one day put a barn somewhere in this kind of central area and then we're going to have paddocks out here for horses. We'll have four separate paddocks. Aaron's got it all kind of drawn out, but that's kind of the eventual plan. Uh, not a soccer goalpost. I love projects like this, just cleaning up those little areas and kind of starting to make them your own. Oh, a great day. It's also, it's 52 degrees out. I don't, I don't even feel like I need a coat other than the fact that I'm needing a hood on and off uh, because of the rain. We still have a tiny bit of snow in the areas where it was kind of pushed into bigger piles. Also, before we start in, I just wanted to show you this little spot too. We are going to be removing all of this as well. Uh, so this is just kind of a little lean-to, uh, was kind of a chicken coop on the back side, but we're going to take out all of this stuff right in here and kind of just level this out uh, and have it be more open. But we will not have time to tackle that today. That'll have to be another day. In fact, uh, Aaron's got a meeting this afternoon, so we're just going to try to tackle what we can, and we thought we'd bring you along for it so you could see kind of the starting process of this whole thing. So exciting.
All right, guys, it's been a couple of days. We had to dodge some bad weather. It got really rainy uh, the afternoon we started this project, and then it was really windy, but the work is done, and it's not hauled away yet because I think, I'll explain when we get closer to the basketball court area, I think we'll have uh, Chad probably take a big load out. Yeah, um, Paul's going to take some to the... Um, what's that called? The scrap metal yard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we'll explain where all of the stuff's going that we just pulled out as well. But we're standing right here in the Dirtland area, right where the soccer goalpost was, right where Aaron's standing. So that's gone. That's awesome. It's actually sitting over here on the ground. And Bethany has a use for that. So she's going to be taking that, which is wonderful. And here it is. I don't know how she's going to get this loaded up. Do you think? I, I feel like, the like they're going to they're going to have to cut it. Or you know, you could put it on. Her husband has access to like flatbed trailers. trailers. Yeah, you could put it because it's not that wide. True. You could load it up on a trail, a long trailer. Yeah, because it's it's pretty long. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad she can use it though. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Next stop is going to be a view from the pond area toward the basketball court. We can still see the the backboards of the basketball hoops, but the lights are gone and it looks so much better. I don't. Did I get it before shot, Aaron? I don't know. I don't know if I did. But, oh my goodness, to not see those towering, because they towered even above where the basketball hoops are. You can still, there's like a really nice view to the backboard though. Yes, except for, I think we've mentioned the basketball hoops are six inches too high and there's no real great way to uh, lower them. Although some people have suggested just having the backboards removed and then lowering those. But here's the thing, we're ordering new basketball hoops that are adjustable in height uh, for two reasons. One, we can adjust them down. I think they go down to five or five and a half feet tall. Um, that way the kids can actually enjoy playing on them. Cause even if we have them at the standard 10 foot height, both kids are too little to uh, throw a basketball up that high. So we can keep them adjusted down for them. We can adjust them up if adults are playing, but we can also leave them low when they're not in use. And that way we won't see them up really high. So it's gonna take care of a lot a lot and it just oh the load has been lightened just looking through here and not seeing those great big black towering lamp posts oh i just love it <laughs> did you just make that one yeah heck that's yeah, good I did. timing i make most of mine <laughs> so like i said everything is still sitting here we still have the fencing materials which you know the metal parts are going to the scrapyard as well as the lamp posts which are metal um the fence from over here is gone as well so now the whole court is open we also pulled the tree out yeah so that tree is gone which is great and you pulled that up with the tractor right yeah it was like it took every little bit of hydraulics that tractor had really but we got it up yeah awesome so here's the plan do you want to explain the fence situation around <laughs> yeah this? so i'm in the process of getting bids to do a black chain link fence that's like 10 to 12 feet tall and it will go all the way around. I think that, you know, we'll want to play tennis mm -hmm. and, you know, without a, a fence around, I mean, anybody who's played tennis, <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> a ball shagging yes. going on. And I think unless we had a, a fence around it, it just, I don't, I don't see it being usable. Sure. The balls would go everywhere and same for basketball too, keeping the ball inside. So, we were thinking about maybe doing like a Virginia creeper mm -hmm. or Boston Ivy. Which is not invasive in our area. Yeah. Throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. They grow really well for us. Yes. You know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we could still, you know, have it be a green wall mm -hmm. um, because I think that, I mean, like a Virginia creeper would just take over the whole thing. Yes. Fast. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't spread for us. Right. It, would, it would grow tall. So there's that option. Um, you know, yeah, to keep it, to make it usable, I feel like we need a chain link fence mm -hmm. or some type of a fence to go around the the court. So we get the lamp post down in time to put up a giant black chain link, <laughs> chain link fence, but we're hoping that we can get it covered with vines very quickly and it'll kind of create a green backdrop back here. Yeah. I'm, ho I'm hoping. Well, all of this stuff will. I mean, we have so much stuff planted behind the pond area. It just needs to fill in and mature. And then you really won't be able to see any of it anyway. But there's going to be a lot going on right here. Probably not until the latter part of this growing season, uh, September, October-ish. We're going to start um, developing this area. We do have plans for it. Uh, yeah, it's just fun to see these little things happen. So we're probably going to need to cut these in half mm -hmm. to take them to the scrapyard. 
You yeah. probably already mentioned they can't accept not the concrete, concrete bottoms, part. but uh, Paul said he could cut the metal off the concrete yeah. so that all we would have, Chad would need to take the concrete away, but the um, top metal parts can go to scrap. The next project uh, that we have for this space is this uh, area just beyond the basketball court. And it was a chicken coop slash raised bed vegetable garden. And I think I already mentioned this maybe in the video. It's been, it's been too long. That's what happens when there's a couple days between when you start a project and finish it. Anyway, so I can't remember all that I mentioned, but Paula is gonna start dismantling this whole area and we're just gonna slick it up. Like all of this will be gone. There was uh, at one time a dog kennel in this area. All of that's gonna go. We'll probably need Chad to come with a excavator yeah. to pull up, to break up the concrete. Uh -huh and haul that off. So once all of this stuff is slicked up, as well as there's a concrete pad out in the middle of the grass, we'll get rid of that probably at the same time, as well as that random berm right there. But once we get all of that kind of cleaned out, then we can start really mapping out what we want to do in the future yeah. in this space. But it's kind of hard when you've got like stuff in the way. <laughs> I don't know. I like seeing a blank slate. You know, also, <clears throat> I talked to our Idaho Power Guy, uh, which is where we, even though we're in Oregon, Everything that we have is kind of part of Idaho just because we're so close. So anyway, our power company is Idaho Power. Um, we've got this uh, transformer box here and they're actually going to move that box right here. Like right in here. Mm -hmm. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna be really nice for us to create a lane that we can drive our gator uh -huh. or a truck even, you can actually get you know, there is that tree down the way. Yeah. So you can't do, you, we can run our pickups yeah. through. You normal, can't run like a normal a, truck without yeah, a trailer. Yeah, a big pickup yeah. or anything. Or a big, uh, not a pickup. What about this meter, this power meter though? Cause that's uh, still... That's going to go away as well. Oh, okay. So, okay. Let me walk up closer. Cause I didn't know that. I was just looking at it thinking, well, that's still a little bit too skinny, but if that's gone, you know, all of these roses and stuff, all of this is going to be cleared out as well. And then there'll be the fence here with the vine on it. So you won't even see this from the main part of our garden. Um, so this will just be the lane. And then about where Douglas is, <laughs> we'll start in with evergreens. Uh, you know, once the we're past kind of the enclosure for the basketball court, and then the evergreens along the fence will be the block for, you know, this section. That's the, the thought process right now yeah. anyway. So we just thought we would bring you guys along. We thought you might enjoy seeing the process because it's all part of it. You know, you get a new piece of property or you're even starting a new section of your garden. A lot of times you have to tear things out or clean things out in order to make it flow the way you need it to or practical for, you know, your family. And that's what we're trying to do here. So anyway, it's a good way for us to journal too. Yeah. You know, kind of look back and see what we've done, uh, what projects, yeah, what projects we've completed. Check this out. I never noticed this, but look at how much concrete they used. Oh my. Oh my gosh. That's pretty... Uh, that's intense. That's like that's, a foot. Yeah, it's really intense. And I ordered roller skates and helmets and pads and everything for the kids and myself that are supposed to arrive today. So hopefully they arrive before it gets dark tonight. If not, we're going to be out here tomorrow roller skating. <laughs> I'm so excited. You want me to do a granny shot? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.